Hey y'all, Data Guy here, back with yet another viewer request video, this time about how to deal with some of the challenges and what are the challenges that you might run into in your data engineering career. You know, while there are always technical challenges in the field of engineering, you know, that's part of the job is solving those, those fun problems, I more want to talk about career-based challenges. They're equally critical because these challenges can impact you know, your professional growth, your job satisfaction, your burnout, your risk of burnout, and your long-term career trajectory. Um, and so this will really explore career-based challenges that data engineers face. Um, we're going to cover skill development, job market, create, job market competition, career progression, maintaining a healthy work-life balance, and also navigating organizational dynamics. So really gonna try to run the gauntlet and if you uh, want a topic covered that wasn't in here, let me know and I'll try to fold it into a future video. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. And the first topic I wanna to cover is skill development. Continuous skill development is really essential for data engineers to stay relevant in this really rapidly evolving field. But having a mechanisms and setting up mechanisms to acquire and hone those skills in the long term can be challenging because as you can see on the screen, and this is just like some random, you know, land, uh, landscape just for open source data engineering technology. There's a ton and ton of different software out there. And so keeping up with technology is crucial to staying up to date in this industry and making sure that you continue to have a job and get promoted. Um, data engineering tools and technologies are constantly evolving. And so if you want to stay up to date with the latest advancements, you need to be continuously learning and undergoing professional development. This is demanding. It needs to be a segment, you know, you kind of take control of over your actual, your day job. That's part of the reason why I started this, this YouTube channel is so I have a reason to learn about all these new things and then talk about them with, you know, you and my audience. Um, because it is, it's something you need to constantly be doing while also balancing your ongoing projects and, and other tight deadlines. And, you know, in tandem with this, you're gonna wanna always be learning new programming languages. You know, don't get complacent with just your Python, your SQL, um, but start to learn new programming languages and frameworks. Um, start learning how Spark works, how you know, Scala works, how Rust works. That's a really big hot one in the industry right now. Um, and even though there might be a steep learning curve associated with these technologies, even having your foot in the door, knowing some of that language can be enough to get you a job with that language. Because in my mind, you don't really do most of your learning about you know, how a language or a new product works until you're using it in the real world. You can kind of get by with a base level understanding of how the uh, you know, new framework works in a job interview. And then to compound this and to have kind of you know, hard evidence that you are undergoing these skills and advertising this to employers, certifications and training. Earn some relevant certifications, undergo training programs. There's typically ways you can get free codes for you know, different kinds of exams and they're crucial for career advancement. Um, they might be you know, somewhat costly and time consuming if you have to study a lot, but you can also kind of pair this with your own professional development. So hey, you know, maybe as you're learning this new framework, you're also preparing for an exam on that framework so you can kind of test your knowledge and then have that checkpoint so you're not doing double work um, and reduce kind of the challenge of you know, your need to invest in them while also maintaining your work responsibilities by you know, taking care of two, of, uh, two birds with one stone. So the next topic I wanna to cover is job market competition. The data engineering field is really, really competitive. Um, there are a growing number of professionals entering the market. You have people coming from software development, from the data analyst roles. There's a lot of people that wanna be data engineers. So even though you know, there are a lot of data engineers opening, a lot of these job postings require several years experience and this kind of whole list of skills here. Um, this is just a list that covers kind of like the top uh, skills needed for job postings. So you can see, you know, SQL, Azure, ETL, Spark. Knowing these most relevant and most recent frameworks really will help you stand out. And so gaining, uh, you know, experience as an entry level engineer, just to get that zero to one, uh, you know, kind of experience level, think about taking on internships or external projects. I have another video where I go through different projects you can build, you know, you can contribute to open source communities where that puts your name out there. You know, if you're contributing to open source community, you're probably talking to other people in that community. There's definitely some companies that use that and being an expert in that open source product can help you land a job with a company that really needs an expert in that to manage their own software. So a lot of different ways you can get experience without having that first job um, and really help you get into the door when you have the opportunity to you know, get a job. Um, and then 
Secondly, with this job market, you're going to want to find ways that you can distinguish yourself and help yourself stand out. So having a strong publicly available portfolio, a lot of public, you know, certifications, showcasing problem solving skills, a good thing is like a data entering blog where you kind of talk through things you've done uh, through your projects that shows, hey, what is the thought process behind that, which is a lot of times what employers are looking for. These require effort and dedication, but these kind of things as assets for your own job and your career that you can reuse and have, you know, persist over, over decades even. Um, and then also make sure you know your worth. Negotiate your salaries and benefits. Don't always take the first offer. Make sure you're securing competitive salary and benefits packages. Even if you're early in your career, you need to be well prepared to, you know, you're probably going to be working outside of just the lines of that job application and make sure you know your market value. You should be getting paid at least six figures and make sure that you receive fair compensation aligned with your skills and your work in the job market. Now, the next thing and ta- challenge I want to talk about is the challenge of achieving career growth and progression in data engineering. Honestly, there's limited career path clarity in data engineering. Um, you know, this is kind of an example way that you can progress through an organization, but by no means is this the standard. There really isn't a standard path. Data engineering can move into so many different roles, and it's kind of an ambiguous progression role, which can be either a benefit or a challenge if you don't have a clear path that you want to follow in line. If you have a clear path, you likely have, will have the flexibility to achieve that path. You know, if you want to get into management, there's always a path to do that. But if you don't come in with a clear path and just say, oh, I'll just keep getting promotions and you know achieve it naturally, that's probably not going to happen. So data engineers that kind of have that mindset might find it challenging to navigate their career paths and identify opportunities for advancement. So what I was saying is like, hey, find someone out there that you want to model your career after and start thinking, how can I achieve the same kind of things that they were doing at my age? You know, make those kind of career moves. And then another thing you're going to want to think about is, you know, when are you ready to move from that junior to a senior data engineering role where you have more than technical expertise, but also you've developed those kind of soft skills like leadership like project management, strategic planning skills, thinking, you know, outside of just your own role, but thinking about the project as a whole. Acquiring these skills and then gaining recognition for them within an organization can be difficult, but it's really critical to make that next step into a role where you're not only an individual contributor, but you're managing a team. And then another thing you want to think about for, you know, moving up in the data engineering uh, kind of world is cross-disciplinary knowledge. You know, after you kind of have your core data engineering skills ironclad, start thinking about, hey, senior data engineering roles are gonna require knowledge beyond core data engineering. You're gonna need to think about business acumen. How are my data pipelines driving the business? Um, How are my data pipelines helping to drive data science workflows or software development? And start to balance that acquisition of cross-disciplinary knowledge with your current job responsibilities. It's a significant challenge, but it's one that's really crucial to making sure you kind of maintain momentum and inertia in your career and keep moving forward. Now, another topic that, you know, some people kind of dismiss as being fluffy, but I think is really critical is a healthy work-life balance. Any time in my career where I felt like I don't have a healthy work-life balance from, you know, just constantly spending long hours in the office, no breaks, constantly thinking about work, my work both suffers, I'm more irritable at work, and I'm just much less efficient, and also my health starts to suffer. I start, you know, eating more, not working out as much, and... This is something that's really common with data engineering projects because you're typically gonna have a tight deadline that's gonna require kind of long hours of work in almost a sprint cycle. It's typically soft, like, you know, analogous to software development. You know, especially this is when you're dealing with projects like critical data migration or a system goes out or there's critical updates. And if you don't make sure to plan in relaxation time and time away from your computer, after these systems, you know, you obviously when you're in these kind of tight deadlines, there's not a lot of room to, you know, get out of it or, you know, take some time off, but you got to identify the low periods or the slow periods in your, in your job when you can take that time for yourself, when you can de-stress, take some time away from work, clear your mind and come back a more efficient and better prepared data engineer. Um, and, you know, also balance this with your on-call responsibilities. Um, you know, you're going to have to deal with system failures, data pipeline issues. Every data engineer has a story of getting woken up by, you know, pager duty at 3 a.m. These unexpected demands can disrupt personal time and make it difficult to maintain that work-life balance. So try to make sure, you know, you're working your schedule around on call responsibilities in a way that is best for your life. Obviously, you can't always make it perfect, but you want to make it at least, at least as minimally stressful as possible. Um, and then also, if you're in remote work, if you're working at home all day, 
make sure you don't get stuck in the silo. Make sure you're still out there talking to people in your company, talking to people out there in the real world. You know, I, I'm not saying going to the office all the time because I hate going to the office, but make sure that even when you know, you're just typing away uh, all day on your computer, make sure you're taking some meetings, as silly as it sounds. Make sure you're talking to people, uh, understanding how your projects are having a real world impact so you're not just kind of turning into that angry gremlin in the corner uh, that just hates to be poked or prodded. Um, and you know, just crucial also for maintaining good relationships and good mental health too. So now my final category that I think often data engineers don't really think about, but it's really crucial, um, is understanding and navigating the organizational dynamics within your company. Every company is different, and understanding those dynamics is really crucial for your career success. Knowing how to interface with certain teams, how different people like to be talked to. Um, you're going to, as a data engineer, do a lot of interdepartmental collaboration where you're working with various departments, data science, IT, business teams. And effective collaboration requires really excellent communication skills and the ability to manage different expectations and priorities. And that involves people skills, talking to those people, figuring out, hey, you know, what, do, what can we prioritize? What's most important to the business? Um, and then making sure that everyone is happy with their level of priority. Um, secondly, gaining stakeholder buy-in. If you're trying to implement new data solutions or changes that require buy-in from stakeholders, having strong relationships with those stakeholders is going to help a lot. And you're going to want to be able to convince stakeholders of the value of these initiatives and make sure you're securing their support. And this can be challenging. If it's an organization that's resistant to change that just wants to keep business as usual, it's going to be an uphill fight, but it's a fight you need to have. And then finally, you're going to not have to navigate office politics, build strong professional relationships, manage conflicts, and really just stay above, you know, I don't want to say above because you're going to have to deal with them, but make sure you're advocating for your work, not getting, you know, embroiled and sucked into all the kind of low-level office politics. Stay focused on your job um, and also stay focused on providing value to the business. That's the most important thing. Um, but in conclusion, that's really all I wanted to talk about today. You know, career-based challenges in data engineering are super multifaceted. There's skill development, job market competition, career progression, you got work-life balance and organizational dynamics, all you're juggling as a data engineer in addition to the massive technical responsibilities. So overcoming these challenges requires a proactive approach um, and make sure that you know, you're know you taking some of these proactive approaches I outlined in this video uh, to keep your career moving and on the right track. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.